We thought we were so smart. I know. We'll just buy a, a almost new camper and we'll never have any problems with it. Yep, I've been underneath this wonderful new camper for like three hours. We have some problems. They're haunting us from campers past too, kind of problems. They're uh. reminding us why campers, well, they're just not that quality. <laughs> Are, are you perspiring yet? It's really hot in here. <laughs> it's 90 degrees outside. So we got to go camping a few weekends ago. We have some friends who have they have land up on the south shore of Lake Superior. They're a good ways away, but you, it overlooks the water. And I thought as we're like winding up this road to get up there, I'm like, surely the adventure and the mishaps are going to come in us just trying to get to this place. And then when we saw where we had to kind of like drive off road to get to the campsite. I was I'm like, like, it'll be fine. This is not going to end well. But Tom was able to. Shockingly. Not actually, shockingly. I'm a good driver. No, yeah, Tom's a good driver. <laughs> I'm a capable driver. Actually, I even forgot that. We didn't even get to drive your truck on that trip. So we were actually driving my dad's truck. So that at least gave us some confidence that the drama wouldn't come in vehicle issues. So Tom gets us back in, leveled. Leveled being, uh, we have all of the blocks on one side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then after 24 hours, we realized we were sinking, so I had to jack it back up and put bigger boards in because it was embedding itself into like the sandy ground. But now, of course, this wasn't a traditional campground, so we didn't have hookups. Right. So we had to bring our generator, fuel, and we filled the storage tank on the camper up with water so that we would have water. And I don't think this camper we had never used the water tank before. We have. We have. Never yes. mind. So what could go wrong? Right. right. We sent the kids outside to play. We we're trying to get everything set up and we hadn't used it this year yet. Uh -huh. So it had been winterized. Don says, can you turn the pump on so that I can use the bathroom? Right. So I turn the pump on because usually when you first turn it on, I usually leave a faucet or two open. Mm -hmm. So usually there's water running somewhere and I don't think we had anything. Yeah. Tom's going around like, oh, they should be open. Why isn't any water coming out? I'm in the bathroom like there's yep. nothing coming out of the toilet. And then he's like, try the sink, tub. Then I was like, well, that's really weird. We just left the pump on then and we're like trying to figure out like confused what was going what on. What are we doing wrong here? Yeah. Basically trying to figure out. So then I had thought I can hear water flowing. And so I started, I, I opened the cabinets and took everything out because the water heater is underneath the sink, like behind it. At the time there was nothing over there and I was like, well, that's weird. And then you you were just like, water, water. And the, the bummer part was it was coming out from under the kitchen area, but then that butts up obviously to the closet in there. And so I'm like, oh crap. It's like coming out from the backside and through the closet. And then we get it mostly dried up and the pumps off and all this. And I go outside, I walk out, out to that side of the camper and there's water running out from like the floorboards of the camper onto the ground. Now I'm like, what is going on here? Long story short, we had a great weekend though. The South Shore of Superior is much less populated mm -hmm. and it's not as touristy as the North Shore. And so, and it was super fun. The friends we were staying with their kids, ages are like lined up with our kids and it was, we had a blast. But now we're back home and we are gonna go camping again in a couple days and we're gonna go to the Smoky Mountains. And mm -hmm. so it would be really nice if we had water <laughs> on this trip. It's been probably a month or so since we used this. And so I've been trying to figure out what happened. Yeah. And so we can use it all. Mm -hmm. Trusting it's not going to puke water somewhere in the belly of our camper. So what we want to do today is figure out what's going on with the water. We also got some new mattresses for the kids bunk because the mattresses that are in there are very thin. Way for thin. So we got some new mattresses for the bunks, which is be pretty cool. And then we need to figure out something with the curtain blind situation because the blinds that are in there get, they have gotten destroyed from kids rolling around. Well, they're the metal. And so the kids like hit them while they sleep and yeah. move. And you can imagine what that yeah. sounds like. I will say too, it's easy to think like when we were having like this water problem again, my thought was like, what is wrong with us that we attract like all of these water problems? All the commenters say, you guys, campers are built so inexpensive. So it's campers. easy to think we're the common denominator, but actually I think it's campers. I don't think it's us. Camp campers are junk. Campers yeah. are totally garbage. And they're great, right? It's all trade-offs, but. It's not a house for sure. It is not no. a house. All right. So we'll, anyways, we'll see if we can get to the bottom of it. 
why don't we start with the mattresses and then, because I feel like that's like something easy we can get Dawn checked off the list. Dawn wants to start out with the cute, fun stuff. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking that would be like a check off the list and I feel like the water is just going to be, I just imagine more towels needed and stuff. <laughs> so, not that I don't have faith in you. Again, it's the campers. <laughs> so, All right, so I wanted to show what the previous owners did to try and make these mattresses more comfortable? Yeah, so the mattresses are like two maybe inches. two inches thick, but I can squeeze my fingers together and touch my fingers. So not much there. Plus then they put memory foam on. So we're so grateful to rvmattress.com for sending that new mattresses for our bunks. They are a sister company to Helix. Mm -hmm. And so before we had left on our last trip, we had put a new mattress into our bedroom and loved it when we were gone recently. And so we're excited for our kids to get some new mattresses as mm -hmm. well. And what's so cool about rvmattress.com is that they have hundreds of different sizes and shapes. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go onto their website, you should be able to find um, the size, dimensions, and configurations of what your camper needs. You can get camper size, or if you want to oversize, you can get oversized. You can also select like many, I think from like six inches up to 14 inches thick, mm -hmm. and then different firmnesses and cooling gels. We were blown away by how many different combinations of mattresses yeah. are on there. So they'll have exactly what you're looking for. Plus it's made to be lightweight for yes. a camper. And so if you use our link down below, you can save 20% off your purchase. They also come with a 10 year warranty. And a 120 night sleep guarantee. You really don't have anything to lose. RVmattress.com backslash minimal mom, use code minimal mom. 20% off, there mm -hmm. you go. All right, so why don't we get the mattresses into here? You know what I've always wanted to do, Tom? Um, have me do everything. <laughs> no. no, wait a second. <laughs> okay, you know like when you see like reels on like Instagram or Facebook and they do like these like magic transformations? I've always wanted to do one where you like take the box and like throw it at the bed and then like poof, the, the mattress is in there. Poof, Tom wasn't even here. It's just done. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. Would you humor me and could we try to do something like that? Absolutely. <laughs> and of course, just like our Helix mattress, the mattresses come rolled up very compactly in a box, so they're really easy to manage and there's free shipping within the US. Okay. Yeah, watch how easy it's gonna be to put in. <laughs> okay, you get the box. It says team with on it. <laughs> it's like oh, exactly I'm the only it. team you need. <laughs> All right, All right we're gonna ready? do the top. Wait, ready? okay, no, I'm not ready. All right, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> All right, not bad. Thank you for indulging me. We might need to practice that a little bit more, but the mattresses look really awesome and I know the kids are gonna be excited to sleep on them. The other thing we didn't love about the blinds was that they didn't really block the light very much. So I just got one blackout curtain and I'm just using a sticky back Velcro. Like, you know how I roll, <laughs> right? So the thought is that if the kids want to take it down like during the day, they can just unvelcro it. But actually I'm thinking what they do is just, they'll just flip it up over the little valance that's in there. And I wanted to keep the valance just to make it look a little more finished. I don't want to go crazy in there right now. I don't love the valances, but bye. The nice thing about this blackout fabric is that when you cut it, you don't really have to hem it or anything. So I try to use as many of the pre-hemmed edges as possible when I'm doing this, but I know this one curtain will easily do all three of those. And then I also got some new bedding to put in there because that's the fun part. Who wants to think about water problems when you can just put in new bedding, right Tom? I like fixing things, so I don't mind figuring out the water thing. Yeah. As long as I'm not under a timeline, which I am. <laughs> yep. And I would rather just make things look cute. Go team, <laughs> go team. <laughs> All right, uh, let's make up these beds. Tom actually wrestled the sheets on for me, so I was very grateful for that. But I have some comforters and other things that we can put on too. So I wanted to get the same lightweight comforters that we have, well, in our bedroom, but also in other areas of our house. They, they're they really soft, but they're really a great weight for camping. And in the past, the kids have just brought like their fleece throw blankets out here and they're like that's when it's hot out you don't want a fleece blanket right so i wanted some blankets that i could just stay out here so i washed them and dried them it still didn't get all of the wrinkles out but what can you do needless to say these bunks will never look like this again you think making bunk beds at home is tough oh my goodness <laughs> wow these are kind of difficult to make so <laughs> it's totally fine there won't normally be throw pillows on them either i just thought it was kind of fun for today. Get at least one nice shot of it looking really good. And then from there on out, it is what it is. <laughs> All 
and I was able to finish up the curtains too. Um, I mean, curtain might be an overstatement, but it actually, Tom's always skeptical of my like double-sided Velcro hacks. He was like, oh, that actually works really well. Um, it's very lightweight, but this blocks the light really well. I just took him down so that we would have some light in here right now, but this sticky Velcro seems really stuck on there. And so we can just put them up, put them down, and it makes it almost completely dark in there for sleeping. Also, if you're thinking like, that is like really tight space, how does someone sleep in there? <laughs> I fully agree with you. Oh my goodness, I was getting claustrophobic in there just trying to make the bed. So um, for now it works for all the kids, but I don't know, we do have the dinette that, that can work as a bed as well. So we'll see how it grows with the kids. You don't like happy. <laughs> so here's what we've decided. You could buy a brand new camper, you could buy a 10 year old camper. There's one thing that holds true across the board for every camper. They're all built really cheaply. So I have taken apart all the everything covering up the back side of the hot water heater. Okay. I have everything accessing the back side of where the water inputs into the camper. And then I have the, the bottom like plastic thing pulled down so that I can see mm -hmm. everything underneath. And I have the valves switched to bypass the water heater okay. in case the water heater is cracked and that's what's used. So right now we are going to have you right outside the camper here because okay. I'm going to be in the camper and then Corbin at the spigot okay. turning the water on and off because then we can communicate well and then I'll be in here checking for leaks with it on and then we'll check faucets. So hopefully we don't just flood it out right now. Yeah. That would be a bummer. That would be disappointing. All right, Corbin and I are in position. I can hear instructions through the window. Corbin right. is over by the hydrant. Ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm not ready. I'm right now. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, are you ready, Tom? Yeah. Okay, Corbin, turn on the hydrant. Off, 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 off. I could hear it from outside. Where did it? come in well it we may have not found all the leaks we just uh, found the, the first one so far got it because when it leaked when we were using it it like started omitting water from underneath the cabinet here. yeah right uh now the pump is cracked oh. which is interesting that the water still flows through the pump even if we're running city water you know city oh. water shouldn't be running should the be pump. bypassing the pump. pushes water through it so it started peaking <laughs> blowing water from the pump Speak like fun guys, just to make a nicer access channel. <laughs> right, that's the other thing with campers, right? Everything's not easy to get to. Well, no, because they, they don't care. They're just building yeah. it for, for cheapness and efficiency. Right, lightweight. And this is when we like to thank our sponsor, RV Mattress, <laughs> for the new lightweight mattress so I can lift up this bed and get underneath here. That is true. And so we found we had a cracked pump, which pump was down inside under here. But I want to check and see if we have any other leaks anywhere. Mm -hmm. So Gage helped me get that back together so that we can turn the water on. Now we're going to go turn the water on again. Gage is going to hang out over here and watch and see if we get any water coming in here. <laughs> and the, the um, hot water heater is still bypassing. Okay, so that's a non-issue. So that, in theory, we're taking out of the equation. Okay, here we go. Why does it sound like there's water rushing, but there's no water anywhere? So I understand that if... It's going into the water heater? Oh, turn it off! Off, 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 off! Water heater's broken. All right, so nothing is leaking. The hot water heater is bypassed. Um, oh, look at that. <laughs> there's water there. Huh? Why don't we... Because we said the only thing we actually really care about is the toilet flushing, and so <laughs> it would just make sense that that wouldn't work. <laughs> okay, and pressure at the top. There's like nothing coming out of there. That's I'm I'm so confused. I think 
think I've done this before. <laughs> so here's what we need to figure out. So what happened, so somehow water was still in everything, which is what we wrecked the pump, we wrecked the hot water heater, right? So those two things are wrecked. So is there something inside the toilet that could have held water? But we're not, so what I was going to say is we're yeah. not leaking any no, water. No, we just don't have water, so it's different. Right, so, so if we're not leaking water back here, Right. Um, in, well, we can't hear any water either. It's not getting water back here, but why would it not be getting water back here? You're getting to know this camper real well. Usually when I get to know a, a depreciating asset well, <laughs> you send it down the road. <laughs> All right, we're not going to sell this camper. Yes. <sighs> but we have some major things to fix before we can go camping uh, next week. I mean, as long as we want running water. <laughs> yep. Just like chronicles of the camper. <laughs> we haven't had a good water story for a year. Two? Year? Year and a half? So, you know. Honestly, the good. years are blending together. I know, right? <laughs> so, I think where we left it last, you had bypassed the water heater and the water pump. Correct. The um, toilet had no water and the faucet in the bathroom had no water. The okay. shower had water and the sink had water. Apparently I didn't winterize our camper correctly because the water pump uh, burst uh, over the winter time and the hot water heater tank uh, burst. Mm -hmm. And so- I've... So that would make sense why there was water coming out from under the kitchen area and also the back end of the, tr what, of the camper. Yes. Okay, let's see that this is pretty remarkable. This is the water tank that goes on the hot water heater. That's the crack. And actually, I looked up what it would cost to replace the hot water heater, and it was $2,000. And I was like... Because it's one that goes can be gas or electric. Right? I don't care about no stinking hot water that much. Yeah, Cold showers, guys. Cold showers, <laughs> money in the bank. And so I found that you could replace just the tank, which I didn't know. I don't actually know a lot. I mean, because well, you're not the first one to do this. Uh, <laughs> you're not, I'm not. Um, and actually, I didn't know anything about camper hot water heaters before. Now I know a lot about them. And so this was like next to nothing compared to what a hot water heater costs. So I already put it in behind us, inside of there. Actually, actually goes under the sink but so it's already in done replaced we have not tested it we haven't put water to it and have not tested the heat i also put a new um water pump to replace the broken pump moral of the story learn how to winterize your camper before winter so we have a few months to figure that oh. out so <laughs> I do. I realized what happened though, because I thought, why didn't I? Why didn't this happen to our other campers? Why didn't I wreck more campers than one? And I remembered that we never used the hot water heater on any on the other two campers, True. and we also never used the storage container to need to use the pumps on the other campers either. Wow, this is the first camper. This is the first camper that we've used all of its okay. things. But, hey. but luckily. I figured it out and I fixed them both. Yeah, no, that's the and thing. And all you the other little them, things. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And as much as we joked about like campers being like poorly built and stuff. They are. We're really <laughs> grateful to have this camper. And we're it makes incredibly, camping very enjoyable. Right. We're, we're incredibly <laughs> grateful that we have this camper. It does make camping super enjoyable. You have to maintain them a lot. Yeah. Like you like, actually had to put four new tires on. Too. I had to put four new tires on. Not because it's old. It's only a 2019 but it came from Florida. And apparently two years of Florida sun already dry rotted the tires. And then we didn't circle back to your truck too. How can we kind of use your truck the oh, last time we went? Oh man, I don't know <laughs> that. So my truck, 2015 F-150 3.5 EcoBoost motor. Nobody knows it. Right, it go has, ahead. <laughs> at at 75,000 miles, the first motor blew up. We had a brand new engine put in that lasted 1,300 miles and that motor started knocking so then it went back to the dealer and they put a third brand new engine into this truck and then we get it back and 2000 miles later the transmission went out and so we have a brand new transmission yep and the truck has less than 80,000 miles on it and you are not supposed to pull anything heavy with a brand new engine for how many miles <laughs> i have no idea so 
everything. No four jokes. No four <laughs> jokes. Everything. Everything should be pretty good to go. We're actually yeah. gonna drive slow. <laughs> I usually drive pretty fast. We are gonna just take our time to get down there. Yep. We'll get there when we get there. So now we just need to pack everything up. We'll definitely take you along for the trip and uh, we're just really hoping it's going to be a really boring <laughs> trip. That there Uneventful just trip to and from. Yeah, just relaxing. Not much drama going on. The only so. water in the camper we want is through the faucets and the fixtures. And the only fluid we want to have to add to the truck is fuel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'd love to know what you're up to this weekend. Do you have any travel plans? Um, have you ever blown out a water heater or anything on your camper? Uh, let us know down below, but we love you. We hope you have a really good weekend and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.